agree with it in that the narrative around Farrell in particular was not as negative in the mainstream media as it was on social media, nor was it as wholesale. Nice cat, Tom. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really young is that a, a little kitten yes yes he turned up two weeks ago my missus uh oh. went back home i'm allergic to cats as well which is fantastic oh, that's good. Yeah. oh nice yeah right. but you know he's cute he's cute <laughs> they, they always make a beeline for people who are allergic to them so yeah yeah <laughs> Well, if you start sneezing, um, I might <laughs> yeah. I, I might mute you. So don't you know, be too. This podcast is about to get really interesting. Yeah, I know, I know. And then I saw a cat. Oh, I, like, oh dear. I mean, to speak about mental health. Get a cat. That will that will yeah. it? Um, that help. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I've completely lost where I am now. I've got distracted by the cat. Um, anyway, I, yes, I agree with that. The mainstream media narrative hasn't been as extreme as that cat is so distracting. As extreme as wholesale and just as pointed as the social media reaction but my the area which i i felt wasn't necessarily addressed was the domino effect the mainstream media can have and if you take the example of the next big thing narrative that generates a bunch of discourse be it on comments um on articles or on youtube or on instagram posts of social media you know of social media it gets people thinking yeah. a certain way and that's the domino effect i'm talking about is when the Ravi Paper podcast doesn't become the biggest podcast in the UK, then the narrative flips. And that's where the narrative in the mainstream media flips. But obviously that has a knock-on effect. And you say there's accountability. Of course there is, our names are there. But it's almost in inevitable and innate to mainstream media that it generates the direction of social media discussion. So a negative na narrative that shapes, well, shape it like a triangle, generates a whole cascade of negativity that can just spiral and in this case has in my opinion yeah i mean look i i don't think that there is any way that i, I mean debate controversy these are things that are you know you go into a pub you listen to people talking about any sport there are always flashpoints there are always individuals there are always moments in 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 sport that people you know, that people are drawn to, that people want to discuss, that people want to, you know, get opinion on um, and want to test their own opinions on. Um, you can't eliminate debate. Mm. And, you know, and I think any attempt to do so is, you know, is, is the sort of beginning of a very, down, you, you know, uh, big downturn in society. Um, I, I just, I, I go back to the fact that there is a difference between what's happening in mainstream media and it may promote you know ideas that then become distorted massively when it gets to the social media side of things and people st begin to start thinking that they can abuse people's families you know i mean that's th there's just a massive quantum leap between the two and as i say one needs to be prosecuted and the other has got regulations that you know that that control it to a degree and legislation that controls it because if you libel somebody, you'll get taken to court. You know, so I, you know, I just think that the two things, I don't, I'm, I, I don't believe in this cascade effect. I think that there's a line in the sand between debate and between abuse. And, you know, that's what needs to be recognized and, and, and that line clearly drawn by society. Um, and I don't think there was a gratuitous pile on from the um, from the media against Owen Farrell. I think there was a there were some flashpoints like the red card, and the debate around uh, should he take the number ten shirt off George Ford. But that was again, if you go through all the old content across, the, there's never a point where someone's just you know where, where someone's writing an editorial just taking the Mickey out of Owen Farrell for the sake of it. I don't think anyone ever got into that into that realm. All of them were debates about specific issues, and there were uh, sort of moments of 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 peace for Owen Farrell where he wasn't the main story. It wasn't always about him. You know, there was there was one particular uh, story from a social uh, from a certain should I say a certain podcast, um, not ours, uh, about some bust up with Henry Arundel, which I think uh, we can. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna throw the person I'm not going to name the person who came up with that that uh or maybe didn't come up with that story um for, for don't want to slander yeah, them where's this but, going? um 
<laughs> but yeah, so that was a bit weird. And obviously there was some some nasty stuff on social media, but I don't think there was in the written press, I would say that, but I don't think there was a gratuitous pile on of abuse towards Owen Farrell. I think I everyone I... Come yeah, go on, go on. No, and just, you've got to have positives and negatives. You know, sport, like I said before, it's entertainment, and people like to read about the the negative stuff and the positive stuff. And you have to have that debate. Like that's what makes sport watchable. That's why people come and sit in the stadiums and, and watch it because you want to see the flash points. You want to see the bad stuff. And you want to see the good stuff. If it was all good and all all fluffy and nice, then no one would be interested. It'd be boring. Mm. And I, I accept. I think the media play a huge part in in creating. You know, some people, fans coming to the games, and and that's what you want. That's what rugby's about. Like you need that. And like like Nick said, it's got to be, but there has to be a line. You you know, criticize the playing performance, criticize you know certain decisions or certain aspects of the game, but don't go after family members. Don't go. Don't make it personal. Make it about the rugby. And I enjoy the fact that the press can write some negative stuff sometimes about the rugby and the and the personalities on the pitch. Some, but that's what that's part and parcel of being. In the, in the public eye and being a sportsman. But like you said, there has to be a way to control the other stuff that's now affecting people and, and families. And I think that's it. It's, it's, it's that simple. 